Dear friends, I welcome all of you for this lecture seven on the theme Sound of Silence and the Role of Music in the Pandemic from Taiwan Context. We will listen prelude first. I request our deputy director, Tan Mundum Bepe, to play the prelude, please. Thank you. 
let me introduce Father Hoday Raj. Father Hoday Raj is an ordained Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Bangalore, Karnataka. At present, Father Hoday Raj is serving as a parish priest in Sacred Heart Church, Singapore, Bangalore. Father, we are so much delighted and fortunate to have you with us to pray for us. I kindly request you to offer a word of prayer for our seventh webinar, please. Father, unmute, please. Father, your voice is not audible. Would you kindly unmute, please? Yes. You start, please, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, today we thank you for the sound of silence and the role of music in the pandemic, in the Taiwan context. Lord, today we thank you for all the creation. We thank you today for your gift of musicians. We know that every good, perfect gift comes from you. We thank you for the custodians of the music of the divine service. We thank you string instruments, wind instruments, percussion and singers. This coming Holy Week, Lord God, we ask you that you bless you, all who guide through the ministry of music worship. May musicians facilitate music that brings you glory, music that transcends barriers, that divide race, class, gender, denominationalism, ethnicity, and or geography. May the gifts create atmosphere that lifts you up, for you said, if you be lifted up from the earth, you will draw all people unto you. Today, we celebrate the musicians, for the heroes that they are, providing light and renewal to their soul. St. Augustine says, once singing, twice praying. Once playing, twice singing. Music is a song of the heart. Music is healing for the soul. Lord, today I ask you to bless every participant here, every player, every speaker, every organizer on the Ecumenical Christian Center, the music that is played on live in context, the sound of silence, the role of music in the pandemic. It has been healed many, consoled, consoled many souls or many people through your holy music. We thank you, Lord, for the great gift of music and all the players. We ask this through Christ, the Lord, with the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Father. Let me introduce the moderator for this webinar, Reverend Dr. L.H. Rasia. LH, Reverend Dr. L.H. Rasia is a professor of the New Testament in Iceball Theological College, Mizoram. He's an ordained minister of Presbyterian Church of India, Mizoram Synod. Reverend Dr. L.H. Rasia, he studied B.D. from Serampur College, Master of Theology from FFRRC, Kerala, Doctorate from United Theological College, Bangalore. Later, he joined Aizwal Theological College in 1999 and still continuously teaching there. Presently, he's a Dean of Graduate Studies. He wrote a number of essays, articles, seminar papers, both in English and Mizo language. His major publications include Parable as a Mode of Agrarian Resistance, Dynamics of God's Reign and Subalterns in Mark's Gospel. His Mizo book in 2020, Mitui Far, The Sounds of Tears, is a leading publication in the state of Mizoram as the essays in the books made aloud, The Sound of Tears, dropped mutually in convert places. And Reverend Dr. L.H. Rasia, he loves music. His theological exegetical notes on Mizo indigenous songs are widely read and celebrated pieces in Mizo literature. 
Reverend Dr. L. H. Rasia, sir, we are fortunate to have you as a moderator. Huge thanks for joining with us. Hello, me. Vote to you, sir, to moderate this session. Hello, me. Thank you so much, Reverend Sue Kumar, for giving me this rare chance to moderate this session. Welcome, all of you, to the lecture number nine, number seven of our webinar, Sound of Silence and the Role of Music in Pandemic, Taiwan Context. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to you all. It's a privilege for me to introduce a distinguished personnel from the great country, Republic of Taiwan. Her name is Miss Seri Tang. Miss Seri is a linguistic scholar, missionary, and feminist theologian. She has her education major in Japanese literature in the Ohio State University in United States of America. She studied masters in theology in Tainan Theological College and Seminary Taiwan. I came to know this famous seminary uh, because of the great principal who wrote biblical hermeneutics and introduction, Daniel J. Adams. And also, Miss Sherry Dunt, Master of Ecumenical Studies in University of Geneva in Switzerland. And Sherry served as an elementary school teacher, taught English language, Japanese literature, Chinese literature in Taiwan. Being a Presbyterian minister in India, I am very well pleased to tell you that Miss Seritang has been pastoring the Presbyterian Church of Taiwan. Presbyterian Church of Taiwan is working together as a partner of Presbyterian Church of India. And more interestingly, Miss Seri has got intern internship in WCC Geneva, Switzerland, under the supervision of great Asian scholar, Reverend Dr. Dong Sung Kim. She had visited the Pontifical Council of, for Promoting Christian Unity in Vatican City. And Miss Seri has done pastoral internship in Hong Kong Christian Association in Hong Kong. Ms. Seri Tuong Tang went to different parts of the world, represented various economical forums, and presented papers. Ms. Seri also visited our India, our country India, especially South Indian states such as Karnataka, Maharashtra, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra Pradesh. Ms. Seri Tang served as a missionary by helping promote mission work among poor children in Taiwan. And I must also say that Ms. Seri is a musician, a writer, feminist theologian, social, work, social worker with multilingual knowledge. So we shall now invite her to take her time and after her talk, we shall have conversation with her. So, Ms. Seritang, please take. Ma'am, little bit loud, please, ma'am. Can you hear me? A little bit more voice, please, ma'am. Can you hear? Yeah, your voice is low, ma'am. Uh, can you hear well? Yes, we can hear, ma'am. How about this? Can you hear? Yes, we can hear now. Okay, okay. Uh, thank uh, you for 
Ma'am, the voice comes from the artist system, not the one uh, with the one which we put on the video. The voice comes from the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please uh, keep your keep the mic a little bit close to you? We can hear, but uh, the system is far from you. Uh, you mean the voice is small? Yes. Yes, the voice is very small. Uh, can you hear now? Yeah, a little bit now. Little bit? Yeah. Little more. Uh, can you hear well? Okay, I thank you so much for the uh, give me uh, opportunity to do this presentation. Uh, I, I would like to uh, introduce the Taiwan context. Uh, first, I will introduce the Taiwan geology, ge uh, history, history, and uh, geographically. Okay, before Taiwan, uh, Taiwan is an island located in the east of Euro-Asia, between Northeast Asia and the Southeast Asia from the end of the 15th century up to the 16th century European adventurers developed to, and came to Taiwan. And in the mid of the 16th century, uh, when the Portuguese travel to Japan, they pass through this island and see this island is very beautiful. So they say, yeah, Formosa uh, means beautiful island. So hence, uh, from that time, uh, European called Taiwan by the name of uh, Formosa. And the uh, ethnic group, uh, we have uh, four uh, major groups. Uh, one is indigenous people who live in the Taiwan since a long time ago. And the second group is from the uh, China, uh, but from the Southeast province of China, mostly from, from Fujian, Fujian uh, province. And then uh, they, in, they came to Taiwan earlier time and so they settled in Taiwan earlier. And the third group is the uh, pro, pro, uh, people who came from China. Uh, they came to Taiwan later uh, in about like uh, 1949. Uh, following by the Chiang Kai uh, army, uh, they are also another group. Uh, we, we distinct them from the people who came earlier to Taiwan from, uh, from Southeast uh, province. And the third group is uh, Hakka group. They also came from China and they, uh, they are the uh, different language group from, uh, from the people who came from China and also from the uh, Fujian province. So uh, they are also the third group uh, with different language. And the other group is uh, uh, newcomer, new, newcoming uh, foreign neighbors uh, from like a uh, um, recent year, uh, many uh, foreign neighbor, they came and they work here and they, they are next generation. They also came to local people for their uh, children for the uh, son of Taiwan. And also they are the first group of the uh, newcomer, new people come to Taiwan. The following, I would like to introduce the develop of Western new uh, music. Western music in Taiwan. The earlier time, uh, early, the first time period is the earliest mission. Uh, this period introducing the 
foreign music to Taiwan. It was mainly through uh, Christian missionary activities. In the 17th century, when the Dutch and Spain invaded, Western music was introduced to Taiwan and uh, appeared briefly in Taiwan and finally disappeared with the evacuation of the Dutch and Westerns. This time is regards as the period when Western music first appeared in Taiwan. According to historical documents, Dutch missionaries, um, they bring the, they teach the original children to sing hymns and uh, uh, in their um, language. The second period is Western missionary period. This period, many Western uh, missionaries, they came, they came to Taiwan and uh, um, the first Western uh, Christian denomination who entered Taiwan after the opening of Taiwan's port was the Presbyterian Church. And which can be called uh, this period can be called the second visit of uh, Western of teams uh, introducing Western uh, music to Taiwan again. And uh, then a uh, solid foundation uh, for the Taiwan music development. And uh, next, the, during this period, we can see uh, The revival uh, from the southern part of Taiwan, uh, in the southern part of Taiwan, uh, some missionaries they have great like uh, great work in Taiwan. Uh, first one is Hugh Ricky. He is a missionary. Uh, he composed the make us today. When reference when and later announced uh missionaries uh reference William Campbell, he also came to Taiwan. This time Taiwan people already be began to uh to be interested in Christianity and he often thought that uh, people to sing hymns and to praise God. And so they use the music. Can you hear well? Yes, please, ma'am. Okay, they, this period can be, the music was already very important at this time. And the, the other uh, people are like uh, Thomas Barkley, Barkley and the Debbie Smith. And TTC is what uh, established by the uh, Reverend Barkley. He is um, also, he, First, when he came, he already like uh, uh, founding school first, and also like, he uh, teach his school, he taught uh, music in that time already. And the other one is Reverend David Smith. He came to Taiwan in 1876. He served as an early educational ministry in Taiwan and was the first missionary to teach music in Tainan Theological Seminary. He was the first music teacher to be recorded in the history of Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan Christian missionaries. And uh, 
in the northern Taiwan, we can see George, this be Makai. Makai was the first, he was, uh, uh, he, he first, uh, when he came, he uh, was traveling and uh, like uh, doing medical treatment to people, like uh, taking out the, the tooth cavities and uh, giving some medicine. He was not a formal doctor, but he used his uh, medical like knowledge to treat people. So he was popular among people. And he also established the a school in Taipei and this school later become a Taipei, Taipei Theological Seminary. So um, he also established like uh, middle schools. Um, so the school, he, uh, the school he established in North Taiwan can be the um, first Western, uh, Western school in Taiwan. And later he also uh, established the hospital. Uh, the time, the time is over. So he great uh, dedication in the Taiwan. That time he used the two elements as a tool for evangelist. This uh, if it, for gospel preaching. One was medical, uh, medical, his medical sense, knowledge, and the other was hymns. And so that time sing, singing is, sing song is also a tool to, he used to uh, get close to the people. And uh, in, during Japanese occupation period, this period is a critical period for Taiwan to progress from traditional to modern society. Japanese promotes Japanese. They taught Japanese language in uh, the school to uh, Taiwanese people and also uh, set up like a Western uh, music class, classes uh, in their school. So the time started the trend of Western music in Taiwan. Next period is music developed after World War II. That time after World War II, and Taiwan, uh, Taiwan music uh, started to be uh, more profession, professional. And uh, uh, we, we know uh, PTC is the, uh, as a, as a gist. Ito Lo, he was also graduated from the uh, TTCS uh, music major, and then he obtained a PhD in the uh, es ethnomusicology from the University of California, uh, Los Angeles. So he, uh, he composed the many uh, uh, traditional music and used for, for like, uh, uh, church music to, to be seen. Next, we can see the women uh, in the music. Uh, this period, uh, in this part, I uh, majorly uh, introduced the uh, mis fe uh, female missionaries. Um, they came to Taiwan and also they gave great, uh, they, great, they did a lot of hard work. The first one is uh, Miss uh, Margaret Cold. He, uh, the more famous missionaries of the Northern Church also included uh, Reverend William Wu and the Miss Isabel Taylor, and uh, they came to Taiwan. Then uh, they were uh, teaching in the school. Uh, they came, was, were in part inspired by the missionaries uh, spirit of Pastor McKay, McKay, and came to Taiwan to join the missionary work. 
and uh, they make uh, great contributions to the development of Taiwan in the of music in Taiwan. And Miss Margaret Cord, he who he she organized Taiwan's first choir, a school school glee club, and he also uh, edited. Taiwan's first choir book and devoted herself to church choir music for 30 years and for and uh, she was known as mother of church music in Taiwan and next one is Chen uh, her student Chen, Chen Shizhi her was her piano student and he remembered uh, her his teacher um, Miss called and he's, he was uh, impressed one time. She she's said to him, uh, there is no just about in music. So uh, she was strict in the teaching music. So because of um, strict education requirement, so you set up a good um, foundation to the Taiwan music e education at that time. The other one is Miss Isabel Taylor, and she she was from Canada, graduated from the Royal Conservatory of Toronto, and she she uh, taught in uh, Dan Shui Middle School and for a long time in Taiwan, and. Uh, she was entitled Mother of Taiwanese Piano, Taiwanese Mother of uh, Piano in Taiwan. Because she taught many people about uh, playing piano. The other one is uh, Marjorie Lansboro. She, she, after she graduated from the seminary, uh, she applied, came to Taiwan, and and then she was teaching in the Tainan and Taipei uh, school, high school, and uh, also the seminary. Later, she married to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lansboro, and he David Lansboro. He was uh, he was he set up a uh, hospital in the central of Taiwan until now the, uh, the hospital is still uh, famous here and uh, she married to him and then uh, later she set up to uh, move to a uh, central part of Taiwan so she was entitled the mother of church music in central Taiwan and after uh, she also uh, taught uh, many uh, choir groups in the school. And the other uh, ladies, they came to Taiwan. Uh, later, they also uh, jointedly, jointedly managed uh, the pastor, uh, the formal uh, missionaries. He, the school he set up uh, after he, he left, these uh, ladies also uh, jointly managed, managed the school. Um, and uh, next one is about the version and the process, the version and the process of the using the hymn book in Taiwan. The development history of Presbyterian uh, hymns in Taiwan can be tracked back to the 17th century. During that time, missionary first came, missionary came to Taiwan to work, and then they uh, they uh, edited some uh, book and uh, some hymn book. And the first, the early one is uh, Yong Xin, Yong Xin Xin 
yang xin shen shi. Uh, it means a uh, spiritual uh, nourished to the heart, the point, spiritual point for nourishing the heart. And it also can be called the Union Hymn, hymn Book. Uh, it was uh, compiled by the Robert Morrison, uh, also a missionary and uh, who was sent by the local missionary society to China, um, sent by the London, London Missionary Society to, to Taiwan, which is the gospel. And only 30 points, uh, so 30 hints what were included in that book. Um, so this book uh, can be said it is the foundation of the um, Taiwan King book. And the second one called the Xin Xi Gua, Hints, uh, Hints. This one uh, collect 122 uh, Hints. And this hymn book, uh, the lyrics were uh, recorded in the Roman Romanization, Romanized the script. And so uh, for the local people, uh, most of them, they don't know, they don't, they were not educated, so they cannot read. So uh, Western missionaries, they, uh, they learn a uh, local language and then they uh, use the uh, Romanized letter, uh, Roman letter, to uh, write, translate Bible, uh, and also him so that uh, local people, Chinese to pe people to be understand. And this, this him book can also be regarded as an up, up, updated version of uh, Yong Xin Xin Xi. Uh, so this one, uh, is the first hymn book mainly used in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And also it, it, it used the Taiwanese language also. And the third one is the hymn, hymn book, which was uh, uh, completed in 1964. And this, uh, this hymn book, uh, uh, one, think uh, to be noted was is the Xin uh, Xi Gua and Yong Xin Xin Xi, uh, they don't have the lyric, they don't have, we can see the picture here, they don't have lyric, they only have, they don't have the, uh, the song, but, uh, but only with the points, with the lyrics. Um, so uh, if people need to sing, need to sing, uh, should, be, should follow with the pastor or missionary. They sing and people follow them. And the other one, the hymn, hymn book, this is uh, Taiwanese church sing Amen, uh, started from this book, from this hymn book. Uh, and this hymn book is also uh, collect many, uh, it was uh, it, uh, collect many uh, previous hymn book song and also uh, collect like uh, local Taiwanese and uh, uh, Japanese, uh, some other country, their hymns also be include, included here. And the next one is the, the very newly one is uh, 2009 version uh, published the new hymn, new hymn. This hymn uh, has been a symbol of the Presbyterian church, uh, church music and the tradition of worship music from many years, uh, for many years. So after the uh, 1964 uh, 
version of the hymn book. And this hymn book, um, 90, the 1964 hymn book, 95% uh, of the melodies were uh, came from the European and Western uh, hymns. And 85% of the lyrics uh, are translated from the Western hymns. But this new hymn book uh, have uh, a great change. Uh, it, uh, give 50% to the Western uh, American hymns and 25% uh, uh, from Taiwan and 25% uh, from the ecumenical uh, many countries in the, uh, in the world. Even uh, Europe, Europe and even Africa and Southeast uh, Indonesia, Philippines, and uh, India, uh, many countries' hymns were included in this, are included in this hymn book. Next session, I'd like to next, uh, introduce the Taiwanese in instrument, just uh, some of them. And uh, the, the, these instruments, um, First one is sona. Sona is an oboe instrument. He is used in the court music or in the army. So, so in the advocacy music used to express the emperor's momentum and the accompaniment of opera or the accompaniment of folk song and dances. So in the wedding and funerals, they, it also uh, uh, mainly used. And uh, so uh, it is very, or in the like a uh, uh, religious ritual also. So it's very uh, localized uh, instrument. And uh, the next one is nose flute. It is used uh, by the indigenous people. And uh, this one uh, is played by the North. Uh, so uh, North need to uh, blow the air inside this instrument. And so that uh, by this way, uh, also the beautiful music will come out. And it is it was used in many uh, indigenous people, uh, many tribes. It uh, the occasion is for the wedding, uh, funerals, or uh, sacrifice occasion, and uh, also when uh, this occasion that uh, they were uh, they plan to go out to like uh, kill people and to fight a war. war. Uh, uh, sorry, this is not a, uh, an, that is another one. So it is important musical instrument in, in uh, one tribal in uh, Southern Taiwan, uh, in Paiwan tribe, and because they believe that uh, breathing the air is the element of life. So another one is Chiu Harmonica. It is, uh, it is an Asian folk mu musical uh, instrument widely used in Asia and also especially South, Southeast Asia, South, South Asia and North Asia also. And this one is used for self-entertainment and also for the men and women uh, to express their, their feeling or their love to each other. So uh, uh, if we have uh, links here and we also can listen um, the video from them. 
uh, there are uh, some links here for these three instruments. Uh, is it able to play? Okay, next one. Uh, how music shaped and emer emerged during the pandemic in Taiwan? Uh, during the pandemic in Taiwan, uh, in uh, from the year of 2020, it became uh, more severe in 2021. So we can see in the church and the Christian communities, they faced they faced a lot of the. Um, Typical situation in the church physical uh, gathering uh, were likely uh, to be suspended for about three months, three months, and many church gather gatherings and uh, they also training uh, people to uh, be uh, preaching online. So in this time, the media was uh, majorly used. And the, the pandemic, this, by this way, uh, people don't have to go out and uh, so they can stay home. And some other people or sick people, they also are not convenient to come to, to, come to Taiwan to come to outside church so they can uh, watch video in home. So it is, uh, it make a uh, very like a uh, um, convenient, but, um, but also church uh, people who didn't come to church that time, later they might be, um, might not come to Thai, might not come to a uh, church again, and and some people they think it's good to stay home, so they also uh, reducing come to church again during this time, and and during this time, um, uh, like uh, some um uh, Christian organization. They also uh, help this time. Uh, some many people uh, they stay home and they lost the connection to other people. And so many older people, sick people, they sometimes they uh, long they become lonely days in the society and nobody home, nobody know. And that time, uh, people were under. Uh, a uh, very uh, large like a uh, fear. So uh, this some organization they offer like a uh, uh, line by telephone to pray for people. And in music instruments, we can see that um, during this time, um, the Many people, uh, many uh, concerts or music performance were canceled. So many people were uh, stay home. Uh, so, and they started to like uh, recording the music by themselves uh, because they, and they uh, make some like uh, equipment, recording equipment. So, and then compose music by themselves. And so this time uh, uh, brought a like a structural uh, change to Taiwan's music industry. It, and it also give like a great contribution to like a musical uh, transformation. Next one I would like to, and also uh, when we see this one, um, 
we can see many uh, musicians and also like uh, uh, school or like a Christian group, they also uh, bring a uh, lot of music performance to people, to comfort people and uh, comfort, give them uh, support. And the following is uh, uh, from Dr. Ito Lo. He is a Taiwanese um, musician, uh, ethno music, music uh, teacher in the seminary. And he composed this song to um, calm people's fear and, and anxiety and use this point to, uh, uh, to give people like confidence and support. And so we can see this song here and we can see the lyric here and the song he composed also there, it's also there. And, uh, and the author, Reverend Dr. Ito Lo, he expressed his reflection on it. God is the creator of this universe and the ruler of the world. He is full of grace and love. And he incar incarnated into the world and was also cast away and was crucified. So, and he experienced the human, uh, human, as human beings when they are weak and helpless, lonely and powerless and suffering many pains. So, uh, he experienced a lot of uh, weakness, human weakness and suffering. So, thus he can be with us, take and he will be considerate, considerate, considerate and uh, merciful and helping, helpful to us. And so uh, the theologian Bonhoeffer realized that the God who is with, with us is the God who also forsaked us. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, did God really forsake Jesus or did he not really forsake Jesus? If God did not really forsake Jesus, then Jesus, how he suffered so much and finally lost his life. But if God really uh, for, uh, abandoned Jesus, then why would Jesus be uh, sur resurrected later, overcome the death and also uh, accomplish the mission of redeeming the world? So, so we can see that uh, if God not, it was not with him, then how can he redeem us? This, uh, in the same way, we can see uh, when we face this uh, uh, helpless time and when we are suffering, we also can uh, see that uh, why, if, uh, why does God let us uh, encounter uh, such a hardship? If God is there, why can we see our, why he cannot see our struggle? And why, uh, why we blame uh, on God for many things when, uh, when we are suffering? But actually, it is, is it true or is it because uh, we also uh, have not enough faith or what is not, uh, we are not like uh, wise enough so that, and we didn't uh, work harder. So all this uh, we can see, it's not because God is not with us. Like, like God was with Jesus on the cross, that is also there all the time with us, but just we didn't see. So next, how, how silence is understood? What is silence in the context of Taiwan? 
silence can be understood and unpacked in various perspective. And politically in Taiwan, and silence is understood as a symbol of oppression. Sociologically in Taiwan, silence is understood as discrimination. Theologically in Taiwan, silence is understood as mysterious. And musically in Taiwan, silence is understood as an imagined uh, symbol. Culturally in Taiwan, silence is understood as mysterious. Anthropologically in Taiwan, silence is understood as unspoken voice. So in the global spread of the, uh, this uh, uh, pandemic and almost cutting off all the relation, international uh, business and also the relation among people. And so the world seems to have come to uh, a sudden end, sudden stop. Many activities was, uh, were uh, canceled and uh, production uh, also uh, reduced. And uh, thus the damage to the nature and the ecology also have been uh, reduced. People are forced to stay at home and uh, reduce uh, contact to each other, but it also gives people a chance to rest and uh, to contemplate and the ecology and nature also can have a chance to uh, be uh, recovered. In the face of the challenge of this plague, music also play a supporting and soothing, comforting and calming uh, work to people. In the face of the different difficult time, the church and Christians should encourage each other and pray for each other. We also need to think that how we uh, respond and adjust uh, in our faith and explore God's uh, action and our responsibilities from the experience of this pandemic. And these are the issues that we need to reflect on uh, very carefully. This is my presentation. And Thank you so much, Miss Sherry Tang, for your beautiful presentation. That was really an insightful presentation for us. Your cultural musical heritage is so rich and your missionary make great contributions and uh, women's contribution are really appreciated. And also how pandemic bring con comfort to the people is also very uh, comfortable for us to hear and how you understand silence in the context of oppression, discrimination is also very, very uh, powerful. And uh, there is one uh, chorus in tai uh, Taiwanese chorus that is known by the Mizou people in Northeast India. Before I invite uh, discussion and interaction with you, let me just sing that small chorus. Let me try. Chan Mai Chu, Hallelujah. Oh, Chan Mai Chu, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. La, 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 la. Chan Mai Chu, Hallelujah. Oh, Chan Mai Chu, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So now Thank we you. shall have interaction with Miss Sherry. You can ask your questions or you can make your own comment or don't forget to drop your comments in the chat box. So floor is open for all of us. I would uh, uh, like to give, uh, uh, if, uh, people can reflect on the, how this, uh, during this pandemic time, and how the silence can be understood in uh, in Taiwan in, or in uh, your context, in your country. This is uh, 
the question I would like to uh, give. Mm -hmm. Okay, friends, please interact with our presenter. Okay, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Sherry, ma'am. It's really a great joy to listen to uh, lecture from you. Uh, I heard that your mom played a music for you when you prepared this presentation. I want to listen to uh, your mom's uh, music, please. For one uh, minute, can, you, please. can you play there? Uh, you want to listen? Uh, okay. Uh, Milton, Milton, you have the video, please. That is in PPT. Yeah, sorry from PPT, I cannot play the video. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. That's all right. Let me, let me try uh, just a minute. Um, uh, can you just listen in the... No, we can't hear the sound. You cannot hear sound? Yeah, we can't. I don't know how to share screen to yeah, here. None, none, that's absolutely all right. Thank you so much. Okay, don't worry. I think you can send that uh, video to Reverend Sukumar so that we can have in our WhatsApp group. We can play it actually. Okay. Um. I think I, I can I send it. Oh. Or Reverend Sukuma, you you can send it. Ma'am, that's absolutely all right because there are technical issues. We'll go ahead with some other things. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So as our moderator had kindly suggested, if it can be sent a bit later then we will circulate it in our WhatsApp group, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you uh, for the wonderful presentation. The highlight of which I would consider as um, the participation of women in music, especially in the context of uh, Taiwan. During pandemic, uh, whether there was any perceptible contribution from women in composing. Of course, we were just uh, talking about how your mother played uh, that song. Uh, in, in addition to that, was there any perceptible uh, contribution from women as such during this pandemic? Uh, yes, there are uh, like uh, um... I think like uh, what I mentioned before, uh, like uh, uh, Christian organization, uh, they have, they provide uh, like a hotline or for praying for people and they give a uh, consolation and also, um, and uh, do many social work during this time. This is uh, many women also involved during this time. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, 
Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know I make it like it. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the beautiful presentations. Uh, the other evening during the presentations uh, from Sound of Silence and the Role of Music from Mizoram Context, the presenter beautifully presented to us and saying how the Mizo singers have come up and take initiative to entertain and to comfort the people. Likewise, in Taiwan, was there any incidents or was there any choir or any uh, singer who uh, organized songs through YouTube live stream or any other platform to comfort the people during the hardship and struggles we face during pandemic COVID-19? Just curious to know that, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. There are many uh, musical group, including a uh, Christian group and college students and also the um, uh, like organizations and also uh, music uh, industry. They uh, compose a lot of like, uh, no, they hold many uh, concert and also online, online like a uh, uh, music uh, concert or uh, to offer to people. It's uh, absolute, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm very interesting to know that. And another curiosity that I have is in your presentation, you have presented some traditional music like Sorna, uh, nose music or bamboo Zeus harp. Those uh, traditional music, are they still, I mean, used in the present day, especially in the uh, worship? I mean, during the church services or for Christian music, what is the role of those traditional instrument uh, in the present day? Are they still be used? Yeah, they are still used. Uh, they are still used during this time, uh, present, present day, but uh, uh, they tend to uh, be used in the traditional like occasion, uh, not in the uh, church occasion. Um, because uh, they are church uh, instruments is more like a Western. Western and these are a uh, traditional kind, especially like uh, uh, we say the sona. Sona is a Chinese instrument and uh, played in like uh, uh, many occasions are play, played in like a uh, temple, temple activities. Yeah, but nowadays in a uh, traditional symphony, uh, it's not it's not like that. I think I if you can we can see in the uh, video link you can see that uh, in the beginning beginning of this uh, prelude we can see they also use the sona there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Interesting to know that. Thank you. Any other comment? Maybe in India, it's start timing for a dinner. So everyone is <laughs> having reservations. So thank you uh, so much, Miss Sherry, for sharing your musical heritage. And actually, we, I think, yes, we are interested in having your song book, Sheng Si Goa. And also, we would like to see in India, your traditional uh, musical instrument like sorna, nose flute, and bambuju harp. I don't know if we have in India, uh, especially those nose flute. I never had this playing in India. So it will be very interesting if we could have at least, uh, at least in Ecumenical Christian Center Bangalore, if you keep us, <laughs> how to say, our archives. So maybe I think our uh, Mr. Vipe may also collect that kind of pieces. So now, yes, with that, I end my this session. 
Back to you, Reverend Sukumar. Thank you very much, Ms. Sheritong Ma'am, for the fantastic presentation. Thanks a lot for unpacking and exploring the wealth of knowledge in music from Taiwan. Sheshe, Ms. Sheritong Ma'am. Especially you're when, you, when you say about the Taiwan ethnic groups, development of Western music and local music, and uh, Sheng Si Kua, this is all very fascinating. Thank you so much indeed. I thank Father Hurdeiraj for offering prayers in our webinar. Thank you so much, Father, for your presence. I thank our moderator, Reverend Dr. L.H. Rossia. Sir, thank you so much for meticulously, amazingly moderating this webinar. Thanks a lot indeed. Thanks to our Director of Ecumenical Christian Center, Professor Reverend Dr. Shanti Kamasachin for his time and his guidance, uncompromising leadership and guidance in our webinars. Thank you so much, Achim, for all your guidance. I also thank our Deputy Director, Mr. Tangman Lin Weipi, for his massive knowledge and technicalities as well as administrative system. Thank you very much indeed. Already, Ms. Sherry Tong Man mentioned the question. Thank you for that question, ma'am. And next webinar will be 11th of April, 2022 will be having an eminent scholar in music by name professor father dr m p george mamutil from kerala context father m p george will be present a paper on 11th april 2022 coming monday kindly join with us i request uh, our deputy director tanman Vinvete, to play the post lead please the go ba kong bu you Thank you all. Thank you so much.